I, if they're all there at the same time, there's four basset hounds. <laughs> four is too many. Are oh, those those, those short dogs that likes to chase? long ears? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aren't they kind of lazy? Mm. Until they decide to be motivated. They look lazy. Oh, they look <laughs> they look lazier than they really. Well, it depends on the owner too. Like if you let them lay around and feed them too much, then they'll be lazy. But. Hmm. Hmm. If we're going to start out with a dream, uh, can I move you over there to the hot seat? This one? Yes. Okay. You've got one too. Uh oh. <coughs> dream? Oh, but you wanted to explore something as well. Uh, well, I was thinking about what I want to do. Oh. And I figured. Uh, and I'd quit my job there, Pierre. I was thinking maybe I'd join you guys on Monday and give me a chance to I don't know, see what I failed at over the weekend. And well, wait a minute. Let's put that up for a vote. <laughs> yes. Mm. I said fail already. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I fail plenty. It's just so like I go through periods of paying a lot of attention to what I'm doing and only sort of paying attention. And I've been more on the sort of and going, what am I doing? Time to pay more attention. You just, you just gotta listen to what the stuff going on in your own mind and say, really, you're still here? Or, uh, oh yeah, that doesn't get me so bad. Or, God, why the hell am I doing this at all? So, so with all the previous talks that you had said, uh, list all the negative things about your job, then you finally decided to leave and quit. Are you questioning it now? Oh, second guessing it? Maybe, but uh, no, not really. I've been quite a bit happier than since I'm out of there. What to do next is another question, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't even think it's about the job. Really. Well, maybe probably everything in general. But I did kick myself the other day. I was sitting around playing out the old games all day long and said, really, I quit my job and I have some time off before I get a new one. And I'm sitting around fucking around like I'm 20 still. Come on, <laughs> time to get off my ass and do something, at least for me. Well, it took me a lot of years too to learn, do something for yourself. That's pretty fast. And it's not that, and it's not that easy to do it still. But I still recognize, that, hey, if I'm unhappy with this, there's something I can do. Change what I'm doing. If you don't, yeah, I think I'd heard that one from Pierre, or at least this group in general. Uh, if you don't like the situation you're in, get out. <laughs> Stop staying there. Move on. Do something else. Here, here. I yeah. second that motion. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Easier said than done. And we're working with but, uh, our beloved nephew on the same thing, 14 years old. Well, I think everybody on this world is in that issue, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who actually does something about it? Well, so just speaking from uh, experience a few years ago when I left my job or got kicked out when they laid me off, it took a little while to get to find myself again. But it, it, it seems like you're at that, con not confused, that discovery state right now, you know, trying to find out what you want to do, how to, wait, what company you want to look for and apply. Maybe you just need to make a list of those things. And then start talking to people that you know already, uh, that you like. And oh, it, well, in terms of the, uh, the job thing, I had a guy that uh, Pierre's daughter grew up with, uh, I'm friends with him and he's got a company so I thought for a, a temporary thing I'll go with him and if nothing else even if it's not working out that well he will very much verify to some other employer that yes I was employed so it doesn't appear like I was sitting around doing nothing because yeah. people all seem to care about that sort of thing so I'm like that end I have covered so I was like good so if I don't choose to work for a while which I'm fine with I'm like I could open a book or get my butt onto the cushion, you mm -hmm. know, and 
I recall I used to do that frequently because I had time, so I'm like, okay, I fucked around for two or three days straight, I'm like, that's fine, whatever, and it's, you know, it's not killing me, but I'm like, it's not doing anything that I want to get accomplished either, so, it's like, time to do something about it. Rather curious kind of fellow, isn't he? Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Jenny, think... trying to find out what's good for him. <clears throat> and I'm really good at being angry at other people for not doing what I'm saying I'm and then I had to step back and go but I'm playing out the same shit as them maybe they're worse than me but who cares <laughs> like I can't change anybody else I can only only do what I'm gonna do <laughs> it, it seems it seems like the cushion is a good place to look oh yeah Let's look for work <laughs> <laughs> really I used to get all kinds of good problems out of there keep the little pen and paper there and something strong enough comes up, write it down. Well, Read. A, a new beginning. Right. <clears throat> yeah, right. Another chapter of the same book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, uh, I did that when I was younger. I'd go to Friday night with the same book and so every time I'm doing whatever else in my mind instead of reading what I aim to do, write it down. Same thing when you're sitting, write it down. You start looking for uh, the commonalities and you're like, oh wow, this one's all over the place. That's an issue and I'm clearly not seeing it very well. Well, but now you know. <clears throat> well, I know that it happens sometimes even, I know, but no, sometimes no. even what it is. <clears throat> Why sometimes it gets beyond me, but uh, not, not always. Or why continue the loyalty to the same old crap? That's the. That's it. That's the question. Yeah, I called some of the uh, maybe six months ago or so. The exploration was I'm already aware of what the consequences of this action are and why do I do it anyway? Like, I know the game, I know where it's going. Why do I do it anyhow? Yeah, didn't you say that that was like the key question? Is to ask what keeps us loyal? And yeah, how? Let's see how it looks in this dream of yours. <laughs> okay. Want to read it? <clears throat> Hold on, I want to mute the mic. I got to switch mics. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you make of it? I don't know. What? It's his dream and he doesn't know? I thought everybody knew the meaning of their dreams. Our friend last night said no. He would have guessed for symbols. <laughs> it, did, it, didn't come, it didn't come with instructions. Okay, all right. So what do you make of it? How would you approach it? Um, well, I see, I see like one curiosity, for example, which is the guy that was selling drugs, he said something interesting and I didn't inquire further about it. I think that's one thing that's mm -hmm. kind of curious. And... Say, um, is it possible that there is a, a common theme running through those five events? Hmm. I don't know. Not at all. Questions? Problems? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> it 
Seems like there are a lot of little mysteries. Oh, what's the common? What's common? Oh, by the way, uh, is it possible that you could tell me or grade yourself in terms of your success in each one of those five events? Number one, the top. That was a failure. Oh. I was the second? The second. I mean, hard to say. I'd say a C, C grade. C no, grade. You already gave an answer for the second. Oh, okay. Because I didn't, I didn't inquire. So that's a failure as well. Yeah. Okay, that counts as. Uh, yeah. Third. To, uh, Well, I mean, I didn't answer the question, but it was a good state. But, well, what follows if you didn't answer the question? You were great. Okay, then that's an F as well. Oh, oh. Four of us, we had some weird boxes. We go to the next one? Didn't answer that one either. Oh. And the last? And then somebody else answered the question. So I didn't answer it again. Hmm. And the last one, you have the answer and don't say anything. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, as you look over it, take a look once more. Uh, say, uh, Now that you find something common through those five events, uh, what did it take for you to see it? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, first off, I think it seems like I. Ha I have some answers, or at least a way of going for each one of them, uh -huh. and I didn't give them. So, so. <coughs> what is it like now looking at the dream now with what you're reflecting about and before when you pass the sheets around? Okay. It's very different. I have a... How do you account for the difference? I have a way of going, I have a, a, f a focus, a question in mind that I can use to look at the dream. Let me ask you it again. What, is it, what, is it, what did you discover it takes to see the commonness in your dream through the five events? What did you have to do? Um, what did you do to see it? Like I, di I, I discovered which ones were failures. No. What kind of thinking is that? Oh. Uh, reflection. Oh, a, a certain kind of reflection about yourself. Is that right? Yeah. About the dream, about myself, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> what do you What do you make of that kind of reflection? Um. 
like it appears that you're rather good at it once you get into it. <laughs> like it didn't yeah. take you very long to discover the commonness. I like it. <laughs> I like that kind of reflection. It's, it's kind of easy once I get into it. Well, what does it take for you to get into it? What does it take? That's such a curious question. I know. Go what ahead. does it take for me yeah. to get into it? When, when Jeff said that I didn't, I did know the answer, but... That surprised you, didn't it? Yeah. It's kind of like I ignored that. Yeah. And then yeah. when he said that... It uh, it's the word ignore is rather curious, isn't it, in terms of the dream? Yeah. Yeah. I think also in the first paragraph, I saw the problem. I don't quite remember what it was, but I remember seeing what the issue was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in, in knowing what kind of reflection that is, because it appears that you're not applying it. The kind that I'm doing now? We yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... There is some something weird going on there like I, I, I'm aware that there's some kind of block that come uh, block for that kind of reflection that's what we're interested now that you in. pointed it out right. it's right. I, I can see that in my past yeah yeah um, it's a it's what how would you describe it Describe How would you describe that block experience? In it? Oh, it's a. Uh, it's kind of. Um, what 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 comes to mind? It's what comes to mind is, like reading a book that I would like to read, mm -hmm. and what it takes for me to get into, that. Um, yeah, well. Like at at times the block or the wall seems really big, and uh, the it, it seems like a lot. But then at other times, if I'm in a certain kind of maybe like a playful state, that's when the block doesn't even exist. Or it's very easy to get over. I'm not familiar with that term, so why don't you help me with this block? What's that like? The wall. What is that like facing the wall? It's kind of like there's a it's like there's a big wall here and I'm pushing against it but really all I need to do is just walk around it right there <laughs> yeah that's true but what is it like yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's Kind of like um, when I think about
doing the thing that I want to do, I get a kind of like my I slump shoulders. Like I'm like, ah, oh. like ah. Oh. There's so much. It's like, hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, isn't it? You captured it. Mm. Say it again. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Oh. Oh. And the words you used? Like, it's, it's too much. There's mm -hmm. too it, it, It's too much. Is that right? Yeah, it takes too much to get into it. Takes it takes too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... It's, it's like I, I realized that in order to get into it, there has to be a, a big shift in my, something about my stomach. For some reason, there has to be a big um, change of perspective or something. And to do that is, takes a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you take a look at the dream now, can you identify it in each of those scenes, that state of mind? If you were to relive the dream, could you spot in each of those episodes the very wall you just described? Mm, yes. See, what's interesting is that uh, it's not doing something. Right? It's too big. It's a, you have to have a big shift inside to overcome it. I like that state of mind. Do you see it in the dream? Yeah, I just looked at this paragraph, and yeah. yes, I see it. Yeah. The second one. Yeah, yeah. And then... Describe the state of mind. <coughs> there you are. Go ahead. I, um... I thought it was non nonsense. When I saw the guy selling stuff on the street, and he was calling out brilliant light of being like it was some vegetables or something brilliant light of being get your brilliant light of being um, um, I saw that it was I, I thought that it was nonsense what he was doing and then I it's like for a moment I had the thought of what it would be like to engage him and have him see that what he's doing is nonsense. And once I had that thought, that's when I got that state of mind mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. oh, that's too much. It's like that's too that's much like, hassle yeah, yeah, that's for, me, came in. for me to yeah. get into that. Yeah. Where does that go? Keep the stomach idea as well. Where does that go back? Back home. <coughs> Homework makes me think of homework when I was when I started school in Germany and doing homework was a big deal what grade? Um, maybe like hmm? maybe like grade four, three, four no, that's good I think I was maybe eight yeah. seven, eight yeah well, what was you must have noticed something rather curious about the shift from one school
school to another. The kindergarten was very playful and fun. Uh -huh. But then when I got to the primary school, the elementary school, that's when um, we got homework and just the... It was like the thought of sitting down and doing the homework was like painful. Mm. And then as the longer I didn't do it, the more, the harder it was to get into it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, the, the bigger the wall, the wall became. Yeah. By the way, <clears throat> is it possible that you had parents? Yeah. Oh. Let me do that again. Oh. Was there a, a different kind of demands once you got in Germany compared to the old country? Yeah. I don't even remember there being any demands before we came to Germany. Yeah. They must have discovered something new when you landed in Germany doing homework. Mm. Yeah. Things got serious in yeah, Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think of your parents and uh, how they helped you over this hurdle? They didn't help me at all. Are they ignorant? No. The thing that comes to mind immediately when you ask that was my dad would always keep repeating to me this one thing, which is um, uh, um, after I did an exam in, in, the, in school, I would get a grade. And then, if it wasn't a good grade, if it wasn't the best grade, then my dad would always say, you always say that you're going to get an A, the best grade, but you never do. And he always would repeat that to me. Uh, well, that really shows a great deal of what? Well, to me, it was like I was... Be, I felt really bad when he did that. I was being blamed and I felt like I did something bad. I mean, it, I don't think it's, I don't think it's very good parenting, but that's what it did. Well, that they didn't in any way finish it. Well, they didn't help me in any way. Oh. I think they probably made it worse. Oh. Um. And you took the blame. Especially when your father said that. Yeah. So he's aware of something, isn't he? Yeah, he's aware of some gap in my preparation or my studying. 
What's nice about it, though, that you have to appreciate is that you took the blame. Yeah. Yeah, and he didn't do anything to to help me with to bridge that gap. Yeah, yeah. Say, so in your uh, education, did you ever achieve what you wanted to achieve and get an A? Occasionally. Uh, what did you do when you got it? I think nothing. Oh. So you get nothing for an A, but if you don't get it, you get ridiculed. Yeah. Well, that's fair. I think that's fair. No. Why not? Huh. Why not? What are you talking about? Well, I mean, he's, he's not even, I mean, he should be celebrating that I got an A, but he's not even acknowledging it. Oh. By the way, did you happen to have a mother? Yeah. Oh, a lot of, a lot of young boys have mothers. Yeah. Oh. Well, what is she doing, doing all of this? Um... Cooking, <laughs> something, um, uh, <coughs> what is she doing? I remember um, she helped me learn a couple of things when I was very young very basic things like how to count and how to yeah. draw a house or something but yeah. lat later on she didn't uh, turn it off she turned it off yeah yeah <laughs> well, what turned it off <laughs> what are you laughing about <laughs> just just the, the how you said turned it off yeah because th that's what happened that's exactly what happened it was on for a while and then she turned it off mm -hmm. it's kind of like she did her her part, the re the minimum requirement or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was though. See, you're missing the the important point, which is that it's very proper for you to take the blame in such a circumstance. Oh yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of that? The, the, the bad, the painful thing about it is that it's true what he said, that I, that this happens, but the fact that he's doing that and that he's saying that to me is really bad. Well, what would you want to tell him at that moment? What should you have told him? Like, what is he doing? Yeah, it's, it's like he's, it's like he's conditioning me to see myself a certain way. Mm. What do you want to tell him? Mm -hmm. I want to tell him, like, Well, first of all, it's a good way to raise kids because then they don't get in trouble. Is that right? No. No? Well, what name are you going to It gets get? you in a lot of trouble, actually. What? That got you into trouble? Yeah. Oh. Leaving things to the last moment and ah. this kind of thing. Uh, 
it's interesting you leave it for the last moment. Uh, <laughs> Why? Why? Well, uh, did that give give them time to help you that they didn't? And when they didn't, you had to do it yourself at the last minute? Yeah. Huh? So what are they doing? What name do you want to call them for doing this? What name do you, covers this event that goes on repeatedly for years? Well, it's not just neglect, because they're doing something more than just neglecting. He's also teaching me something. Yeah. And... Yeah, I need a name for that. Could you come up with one? Yeah. Um, hmm. He's like a, the maker of average people, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but what do you want to call that? Uh, brainwashing. So look here, if you, if you want to use that term, if they're brainwashing to keep you in that kind of status. Mm -hmm. Average. Yeah, yeah. But that's a fair thing to do, then the kid can be part of mankind and not cause trouble. <laughs> no. What? That's not good. Well, put a name on it. <coughs> like, what, what do you want to look here? See, the, quite, the issue is, if you can tell me what they're doing, then you can respond. And tell me what you should say to them at that moment shrinking. when they're pulling that stunt on It's you. like they're shrinking me. They're shrinking you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what, what is the... Uh, like, it's it's a setup. They're setting me up. They're... Um, Set up to be... Average. And like small. Small. Um, what's the word? Uh, it's uh, so the, the, there's a term for it, though it's not often used, uh, neotony which is the, uh, the art that we have to keep people or animals adolescents. To keep them adolescents? Yeah. Hmm. What was the word? Neotony. Yeah. Neotony. Yeah. And, uh, that's how we train animals, to be domestic. Yeah. Right? Like um, there's a, a whole group of people that have that as their goal, to kind of eliminate the, 
the savage element in animals, as it's called. Like, uh, it's kind of like reward when they're doing something that you want them to do yeah. and punish when they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they finally, what do you want to call it? They finally accept that as a way of being. Mm -hmm. Then they're not going to do it themselves. Do what? Go out and get their own food find a way to survive on their own. <coughs> right, yeah. That stinks. When you say that, it, uh, it hits a, a, a bigger, a deeper issue, which is, like, recently I've been kind of aware of this sense of like I, I still don't feel like an adult at times mm -hmm. and there's a sense that um, like I'm a, a, I'm kind of like I'm like a child that's just staying away from home for quite a long time but mm -hmm. I haven't quite moved out yet yeah. That's, right. that's what it feels like. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and, like, maybe I should ask my parents for some money. Yeah. This ki these kinds of thoughts, like, yeah. I can rely on them yeah. or something. And that would continue the same. That would continue it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. If you would talk to them both, what would you tell them about the way they raised you? Well, they raised me to be dependent on them, and they didn't instill a sense of confidence or self um, self maintenance or self uh, self reliability. It comes down to that, doesn't it, for all of the self. Yeah. They made me believe that that I can't rely on myself. Yeah. That's all that's all they need. Right? Yeah. Then you're it's civil. Then you're a social animal, you'll stay within those limits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wouldn't you want to congratulate them on their skill? Yeah. I'll give them a big trophy. <laughs> well, then what do you want to tell them? Um... Right now, what do you want to tell them? say you guys essentially treated me like an animal you trained me not to believe in myself or believe that I can rely rely on myself and so you handicapped me for life and now what are you going to tell them? And um, I don't want to be part of it anymore. Oh. <laughs> then what are you, how are you going to express that to them?
I know that I can rely on myself. I've seen it a hundred times. And um, what you taught me is a lie. Yeah. What does that do? It addresses uh, a big uh, kind of insecurity or something that I had that I've had, and it reaffirms what I've seen s mm. many times mm. that. How are you going to test this? I have a few ideas. See, we want to see if the wall stays there. Yeah. Therefore, you want to test it. Yeah. You have a couple of scenes you oh, have yeah. to tell me. I will, yeah. yeah. A couple of ideas of how to test it? Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I have. sure you have a couple. So the next time we see you, you'll tell us where, if the wall is still there, won't you? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that all problems are about the self? Because it's all about the self? No. Yeah. I mean... That's the protagonist of the story of life. Mm. <laughs> and that's where they kept you from, the self. When I, when I cross that line of what's acceptable, that's when that's called bragging. That's how they should put that down. Yeah, that's called bragging. Oh, so anytime you want to assert yourself, that's called bragging. Yeah. That's it. That'll put it down, won't it? So they're hitting it from both angles. Yeah, yeah. From both sides. Yeah. What do you think of that charge, bragging? <laughs> uh, bragging is a total... The whole, I, the whole concept of bragging is just bullshit. It's like... Um, It's putting a, a bad title on something that's essentially very good, mm. which is showing excellence mm. in whatever it is. Yeah. And then, but, and the way that they're doing it, it's kind of like a false sense of humility. Yep, that's right. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's being average. That's being average, yeah under the pretense of humble humble yeah. <laughs> it's quite fascinating it is finish it the way that like, I mean, most people wouldn't think anything of that. A, a, a dad, a dad telling his son, "Oh, you always say you're going to get an A, but you always get a C." It seems innocent. It seems like just the sentence. Uh, it seems innocent to what kind of people? Average people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true.
you know, if you start developing this idea of the self, uh, you're likely to be in a, a place of the, the blind and you have one eye. Of the blind and I have one eye? Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> you'll have an advantage over them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they have a good life, you know, because if you're blind, you know, you'll never be so stupid as to work in the sun. You work when it's cool, right, at night. So they have a whole way of life at night. Oh, by the way, if they ever discover you have an eye, you're going to be looked upon as rather... Like I'm bragging? They may have to do something about you. Um, well, they might no. think I'm dangerous. No, of course they will, and therefore they're going to cure you by uh, just eliminating the one eye you have that's working. Then you'll be like them then you'll be normal. Hmm. What, what, why do they do that? Hmm. Well, they like people being normal like themselves. <laughs> That's it? That's their reasoning? Yeah. Everybody should be like we are? Well, also, doesn't it make sense to work at night out of the blazing sun? Right? They figured out how to grow things by putting boundaries out there, separating fields, and they can therefore harvest things. They can work very well blind together. <laughs> but uh, watch out when they suspect your vision is causing them trouble. What will they do? Well, they'll try to poke out my eye. Sure, to make you normal. Normal, a.k.a. blind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what follows if, with this story? That now that you have one eye... Well, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also enjoy the seeing. Uh, you might be around the day. I might be around the day. Yeah, and people who enjoy seeing in the day. That's really nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the moral of this story is that uh, it's a dangerous state you're in, depending upon what group you're in. You can easily go back home, as it were. But be careful. Okay. <laughs> it's a balancing act, huh? Yes! To be able to stay away or well, to go back into the home now, or the village? You're the kind of person that will not do well going back home. I have to keep my mouth shut when I go back home. Yes. <laughs> and if you dare open your mouth and say what you see, I would get these thousands of bites, slow <laughs> death of bites. And how? <laughs> right, that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Oh. Think you'd agree, would you not? Well, I have a strange family. <laughs> not any stranger than mine. Yeah. Well, like I've seen people get excommunicated from their family for being into this, but mine still, they know what I do. They don't tell me to go to church anymore or any of that, or they gave up on the idea of my political thought and he's just going to do what he's going to do. I still have to go to some family things occasionally that stay in, but I'm like, and largely they gave up on it. I don't never understood that one, but uh, 
I mean, they must have me by where they want me enough anyway. Yeah. You know, you, uh, Eldar is funny. And when you started saying your stuff, I was like, oh, the, uh, the keep you down part? Oh, I, that sounded like my dad pretty well. I was like, except the bragging part isn't there. Oh, we're certainly allowed to brag. You're just not allowed to practice to get good at anything. But if you manage to break through and you do get good at something, brag away. But sacred. remain average. Yeah, mm. remain average. But if average. you aren't average, then you can brag, which is kind of difficult to be not average if you're not allowed to practice. But uh, yeah. I was thinking that must be why I love the backpacking thing there, too, because uh, you get out in those woods, well, there's nobody's going to save you. You either do it yourself or kiss your ass goodbye. My buddy and I got stuck in this intense monsoon storm. Yeah, for a while it was just raining, whatever, and we put the dogs in the tent, and then it started coming down hard, and hail, and lightning, and well, we both just kind of knew it's time to act, like, right now, or you know what the consequence is, and it's not going to be good. And we just stopped talking and said, you got this, you got this, all right, good, and well, see when it ends. <laughs> Saw some other backpackers out there. They're like, wow, we knew you guys were down there. We we're over on the next ridge. That was intense. We all lived right on. <laughs> what? How did you prepare? Well, I bring the right kind of stuff with me. Mm. Just, uh, so I've been out in this so many years that I kind of have an idea. This is what I need. And sure. As earlier on the trip, I was like, man, I carry too much crap. I could get rid of some of this stuff. And then when that storm hit, I'm like, I'm not getting rid of any of this stuff. <laughs> I don't want to be caught in this with a friggin' tarp going, oh, God, when's it going to end? <laughs> Decent tent, rain jackets, you know, uh, just the proper gear. I did learn one thing. Don't pump your water through a silty stream because you'll jam your filter up. <laughs> Which we did, and didn't, had never considered it before. I'm like, all right, I'll never do that again. Well, I want to add that what I said was kind of negative, but I do share when I go back home into the village, share when uh, sparingly, you know, and, and the light does get to some of those people. I don't completely stay shut up for the no. whole time when I go back into the village. Like you said, you got to just go carefully and, and share with those who you think can tolerate mm, that's right yes yeah fair enough as if I was to uh, say anything like I would to my mom or brother who don't want to hear it also but they will sometimes listen to the extended family that would be a bad idea yeah, yeah. what is this man in well, terms I of classes of people. Are you guys entering a similar class? It means we all have potential. <coughs> Even though if, if the, you know, like the level of knowledge or people being able to recognize the self mm -hmm. um, might not even realize that there is the self, but then um, if they start to kind of see it in others, maybe they might start to see themselves too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> is it likely that you can spot people like yourself, Sarah? Um, I mo most of the time. No. Yeah. Sometimes I get yeah. clogged with my seeing. But at other times. But. Mo Usually, I, I can. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, that happens with you? A lot. What does that mean? Well, what does it mean? It means you still have work to do. <laughs> On yourself? Uh, it means there's... Um, mm. Mm. Well, two ways. One, that the self isn't going to give up on you. Thank goodness. <laughs> because we struggle to make sure or try to. Okay. And the other side is. Yeah. Can, are you familiar with uh, uh, 
from the Golden West College study. Yeah. Uh, Chef has been into it. By the way, are you guys becoming sulfurs? Yes. Yep. Yep. What is, what is the study? Is that right? What is the study? Uh, Kier did a study in 69, uh, studying about 100 Golden West students, and the request was, uh, why do students go on probation? Mm -hmm. Like academic probation? Academic probation. And so he found four types in the, dis in, the, in the study. The first type with the high schoolers, the second type with the future careers, the third type were the vocationalists, and the fourth type were the selfers. The selfers were ones that went around and had specific goals of finding who the professors were that would maximize their interest in their own particular pursuit of self or themselves or what they desired to pursue in excellence. So Vocationalists were okay. at the age of two wanted to be a doctor or <coughs> a lawyer and they knew exactly what they needed to do before. Not reflective, but reflective in their own direction. So, uh, what are the political implications of the growth of this class? Of the selfer class? Well, we probably have more conservation. <laughs> I like that you asked Regina that, given the dream that we explored last week with her. It answered that question directly. In your dream, you had a selfer. Oh, that address a large political body telling them exactly what they needed to hear that they didn't like very much. Yeah, a lot of them. The majority, but yes. So what would the ramifications be of that? Uh, um, do you think selfers are most loyal to Trump? No. What? You mean to cut through political parties? And religious mm. dogma mm. and family <laughs> dynamics. <and> <laughs> <laughs> I'm told I'm weird because usually if the Democrats are in power, I'm saying I hate what they're doing and the Republicans are in power, I'm like, I hate what they're doing. And my, some of my friends are like, you're weird. You just don't believe any of them. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. they're all out to get me. And you, just just let you know, we're not the billionaire class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remind me, what was the second class again? The vocationalists, the future careers, which walked into college hoping that maybe grace or something will hit them over the head. And yeah. And that's the, how I understood it. And, <laughs> the third, and the third one, just above the high schooler part of yours? With the future careers. And, oh, wait, okay, so do it again. High schoolers? Future careers, career. vocationalists, Vocation. and selfers. What differentiates careerists from vocationalists? that they have a specific reason for going to classes that would help them look into I see. They had a goal from the beginning. Right, like you went into school saying, I'm going to be a doctor. A vocational goal. Yeah. Versus, uh, you know, you go to OCC or Golden West and you have your first two years and you don't need to declare anything. Like, you're just, I'll figure it out as I go. Right. What's the cell phone? Is that the people <laughs> that just going for like a certificate or? Oh no, no, the selfers are the ones that want to find something about more meaning in life oh. and more meaning in their, uh, they're picking the particular professors yeah. that would get them to become more meaningful in what they would like to see about themselves. That's my conclusion. I don't remember the study that well. Mm -hmm. And then the high schooler were the ones that were always on probation. They go to the probation classes, and they wanted to have um, life as a nostalgia of high school. So they last the, year. No, the school administration wanted to know if there was some way to understand why people dropped out, especially those that were doing very good in terms of great performance. Oh, 
Yeah. And so it, they didn't like the results that we brought in because one of the marks of the selfies is that uh, they don't they don't study particular subjects unless they have the sense that the person who's doing the teaching is open and receptive to them and their questions. Mm -hmm. But that put a big burden, you see, on the college. Mm -hmm. Because that meant they had many instructors who just did their work mechanically mm -hmm. and they didn't give a damn about students. And they were prized as great teachers. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they had to take a look and say, hey, uh-oh, uh, it's not enough to get a mathematician who knows his mathematics. You might have to get someone who loves mathematics and loves sharing mathematics. Yeah. That person would draw these people into his class. And therefore they weren't interested in particular subjects as much as they were the atmosphere of the teacher and the atmosphere they created in the classroom and were open to explorations of this and that and the other kind. I, I took a math class at OCC many years ago and the instructor, some kind of algebra class, and the, the instructor says something about the ancient Greeks. He goes on to Athens at that time and period and he says it's the greatest culture that's ever existed on this planet. We're a pale shadow of them even with all of our wonders. We're really nothing like them. And he was, sounded so unenthusiastic about it, too. But I was like, I walked up to him at the end and said, you know, that's quite a statement you just made there. And he, he sounded bored to death. And he's like, oh, actually, it's completely fascinating. But uh, look who I'm teaching, a bunch of kids who just want to get on to the next class and get on to their whatever school they're going to go to. These kids just got out of high school and don't really care. So I kind of wasted my time to get excited. I'll chat with you all day about it. You see me, you just, you heard what I said. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was the most profound thing I've heard in this entire class. So we chatted for a while and I was like, wow, but it's always hit the nail on the head. Like he was teaching the, for You're a paycheck. Selfie, so at that moment. Well, I changed because when he said, <laughs> when I got in, I'm like, I sure was not. I was probably a... Uh, uh, looking for something or just, well, I sure didn't like high school anymore, but I was just, whatever, this is the next phase that I have to go through. And then, oh, then I met you and that changed it all. Wait, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> it's not all relative, but, uh oh. <laughs> here, I have a dream, just in case, if you're not. Yeah, I have a dream. You know, I, I think we talked about it once, you and I, Pierre. And I was playing with the idea that um, those four classes of students that you identified might be mappable in some way onto the Parmenidean hypotheses. Sure. And I think at the time, sure. I put forth the idea that uh, um, you're looking at 5, 4, 3, 2. Mm -hmm. um, Or, you know, but now that I think about it, um, I think the selfers could be either two or one, mm -hmm. ultimately, what they're sure. looking for. And at the other end, the high school or partiers could be five, but they could also be uh, maybe eight. Yeah. And the careerists uh, could definitely be five or four. Sure. And the vocationalist could be three. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to work on that. It's very interesting to... No, oh, that's right. Yeah. By the way, in terms of the destiny of man, finish it. Hmm. Well, um, bubbles rising to the surface? Um, the destiny is we all get to the surface. But right now, some of us are a little lower, but we're all rising. 
So maybe as souls we had to, through various incarnations, spend some time in the high school part of your class and later learn and move up until you get to be a selfer. You know, what's interesting uh, is that the, uh, these four classes, we can call them, are insulated. There's no movement. Uh, there's no bridges across them? Or you mean uh, people don't change, they stay in, in that class, at least in that incarnation? That's right. Unless something <coughs> can break it. I went through, is it all relative with Pierre Grimes? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, but was whoa, that, whoa. <laughs> If you took your study a little further, would you say that the implications were not only that the school was not meeting the needs of these, in the various ways of these four, but also, um, that if they had met the needs, ideally, they could move people up, mm -hmm. across, percolate them up. But they'd have to realize that they're going to face problems at home and in their culture. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Yeah. But so then they would need additional support yeah. during that time. Mm -hmm. It'd be quite a school. Yeah. That have to have literature. That have to have literature classes that would feature this as an essential part of growing. Right. The uh, the people you call friends in your class, if you want to switch, they're not going to be your friends anymore. Or maybe right. one or two. But you might hang on to a couple, but uh, most of them are going. They're gone. Yeah. Uh, just just one more thing. Is um, I, I, it seems to me like it takes a certain trust. This whole um, the idea of being a selfer, like um, I noticed with me that, um, like I've I've met. Um, I have I like I have ideas of what. What is a good way of being? What is the self? Mm. And like I hold on to these ideas as I move through my life and as I meet lots of people. And um, it's kind of like I've been sifting through people my whole life. Mm -hmm. And now recently, very recently, I've started to meet people that are like me mm -hmm. and started to kind of be on that started to rec I'm starting to recognize them better mm -hmm. um, uh, like the other person who has an, a, an eye mm -hmm. right um, and so I was thinking about the idea of trust mm -hmm. or knowing that you are self-reliable and kind of like waiting until you meet and like it takes that trust in order to be able to at one point see it in another person for example like I met this uh, one girl um, a couple of weeks ago and it just blew me away that I could be functioning on that level with a girl who's also pretty and who's um, also a selfer. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so it's, it's, so th I'm thinking like it, it took a long time to, I, I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying but uh, that it's kind of like I don't know, like, I have more self-reliability now so that I'm able to recognize it in others. Mm -hmm. That's essential. And the difference between 
um, spending time with a person like that and the person that isn't like that is... <laughs> is <laughs> goodbye. It's kind of a waste of your time, huh? Yeah, yes. Like, <laughs> right, like now, now after I met this, uh, this woman, uh, now she is the standard for what kind of relationships I will even consider. Because it's so nice, why would I even waste my time with anyone that's not like that? At least like that. Dangerous. Oh man, the other women must love her. Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous for who? For her? Or for his seeing? Yeah. For his seeing? Okay. So, would, would you call that trust or...? Would you call that a kind of trust, or what? Pardon me, I think you did yourself. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just playing with that idea. Yeah, 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 yeah my opinion doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, trust is, is a lovely, lovely subject. I don't know if we want to get into it, because Regina wants to do a dream. But I want to say, right, it's fascinating what that word goes to when you start talking about the self mm -hmm. or <clears throat> try yourself like like what does Nietzsche want to trust in is the opposite of, of what we're talking about right Nietzsche wants to trust in and any for that matter God. I love the sound Can you share Nietzsche, that? Nietzsche wants to trust in um, the wheels of the clock. Hmm. He, he wants to turn everybody into a gear, or at least the philosophy that he's talking about wants to turn everybody into a gear that can be trusted to do an average job. And we just got done talking about that with Elder's case, right? Your average, I see that in the university that I am. They want to replace everybody excellent with someone cheap but average. Just uh, uh, before you continue, other. I have some root beer. I didn't know whether anyone would like some. Cool. Would you like some root beer or anything? Root beer. I just wanted to interrupt oh, that and say lovely, yeah. root beer. You know, roots and beer. I've been told not to drink. Root oh. Beer. <laughs> oh, then you don't get anything. <laughs> I, I follow my doctor's advice. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. You told me only drink one cup of coffee at a time. <laughs> but the... But no root beer. But no root beer. But that's for a person who is, uh, say, in, in the sixth, right? He's denying self. But what, for pe what about people who... Um, and forget five, four, three, two. What if you're really looking at... Well, I guess... To boil it down, I want to say, ultimately, the only thing you really can trust is self, with a capital S. That's where trust uh, uh, appropriately lies, the only place it lies. But the problem with it that a fascist has yeah. is that it's absolutely and completely and totally unreliable for his aims unpredictable, joyful, creative. Uh, you don't know what's coming out of their mouth next. Um, uh, unlimited in terms of reach. Um, that's what we can trust in. Oh. Mm. Throw it out. Gee, you didn't pass the booze out already? No, it's root beer. Could it's you please root beer with alcohol. No, this, yes. Oh, is it? Uh huh. Oh. I was pretty sure I recognized the name of it, but it says 5.9 percent alcohol. I didn't oh, like it. Does sound a little alcohol. Oh, really? No, I don't want to. A friend of mine did. Uh, okay, well, I've got see. beer, but I. <laughs> I just said when it says you're not your father's root beer, and I was like, I swear I remember a guy I worked with telling me stuff about it, saying it was pretty good for a. Alcohol root beer, and it's like, and he was about to crack it. I'm like, could I see that bottle? 
Oh, yeah, that, that very much has alcohol on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be darned. I didn't Thank notice it. it. I, I just looked at root beer. <clears throat> so. Anyway, so <clears throat> did you guys, if you're going to do a training, can I move you over there? Yeah. Be, uh, hot seat. If you don't want the root beer, though, I'll put it back okay, in the refrigerator. <laughs> no, I'll try a bit just later. Okay. I'll put it in and keep it cold. Yeah. Like that's a pretty strong beer, actually. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Well. <laughs> interesting. I was at a high school. That's enough. Hold on. Oh. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> what do you make of it? Uh, well, I, what I noticed was the class was split. It was kind of like the last stream last week, which was you had some of the Congress that was listening and others weren't. Uh, but compared to that last stream, I noticed that I was doing... I wasn't watching somebody. I was actually in, engaged this time. But there was a lot of distraction. I noticed in reading this, too, that uh, there were some corrections. Just uh, I do remember that what I did ask or talked about with the students was attitudes. So, but I, I don't remember anything about it. Um, Uh, I saw that I didn't do, I got, there was, well, I, I, I don't know what happened because I don't remember the dream in terms of content, but there was a lot of distractions, so. 
I see that that's representative of my psyche. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Jeff, what would you pick on? <clears throat> well, in general, it's actually doing fairly well in the dream. It's a, I think it's a, uh, so the, the other teacher recognized you're presenting a method, and she's like, awesome, do it. And you're like, hey, I'm, I was expecting to prepare and come back. Mm -hmm. She said, well, you can do it now. And you said, well, I guess I can. Something like, that's where I'd start. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, cause it sounds like even though without being prepared, you're doing pretty good anyway. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, perhaps uh, this dream might not have the other couple paragraphs if you've gone the way you had in mind. And then the thing that also kind of strikes me, too, is the very end of the kid who's asking these questions, who's on his own, he's trying to take charge instead of you. Yeah. Which you say, uh-uh, that's not how it's going, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what to do with that, but it strikes as kind of odd. Good. Silent? Oh. Um, so my question is, I, I'm trying to, seems like, yeah, I mean, she's doing really well in trying to prepare for the class talk, but um, there's a lot of this distraction, um, given what she wasn't prepared, um, but at the, at the end, No, maybe that's not good. But I, I guess I want to ask what her state of mind is. What was that like? When? When she says, you have to do it now, you know, yeah. not being prepared. Jeff? I was going to go for the same thing, Sam. So yeah. I'm still reading. Well, the other teacher doesn't say she has to do it now. Oh. She says, well, <clears throat> you could do it now, yeah. like... As you look at as you look at the dream, has she identified her problem? It's in uh, the teacher or Gina. Where, where is the problem in the dream? Well, for me, it's got to be either one of two things. One, one, she doesn't. Why do you need to prepare for self-reflection? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what was that state of mind like when she asked you, and you said, well, i got to prepare. Right then, that's what I want to know about, because why is it necessary? You, can immediately do, you should be able to immediately do it if you're talking about it. Secondly, I, I see a possible problem with all the um, distractions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, have you finished, Eldar? No. Okay. <clears throat> You're quite right. You can grasp it in one word. What is, what is the judgment she's making about herself that blocks her from doing what it is she wants to do? Your paragraph three, I stood in front of the class and was nervous because I wasn't prepared. That's right. But what word is most dramatic that represents what is it that she shouldn't, shouldn't be doing? And therefore, she has to prepare. Watch. Okay? So, would you uh, mm. look at that uh, fifth paragraph? <clears throat> Students were coming. Yeah. Go ahead, read it out loud. Students <clears throat> were coming into class. I stood at the front of the class and was nervous because I wasn't prepared, as this was extemporaneous. But I thought about it, and I saw I could ask some questions to the class. I started that way. I asked questions about the problems they had doing their schoolwork. There was something about attitudes, but I don't remember what they were. Yeah. And now, could you uh, stay on the second sentence? I stood at the front of the class. Because, go ahead. And was nervous because I wasn't prepared. Right. What's the reason you're nervous? I wasn't prepared. And what do you call acting without being prepared? 
extemporaneous. What is that like, Jen? Um, well, it's like what I just did when you asked me about the student study, and it's like I have to draw for myself something I haven't reflected on for a long time. Obviously, I didn't catch the main points, and so that's what I get nervous about, that I will leave a lot of good stuff out. And since that is true... And even if I did study it, I'd probably leave a lot of good stuff out, but less so. co-author of the philosophical midwifery book who goes to all these meetings about self-reflection might very well be able to go and give a pretty good talk off the, off the fly to high schoolers. We're not talking going to the philosophical seminar of all the, the PhD philosophers in the world, mm -hmm. high schoolers. Like uh, the setting there makes a difference. And, uh, I've been to Esalon with a tub with you, Gina, and you chase people off real quick because they couldn't stand to hear like anything real and they're like oh this isn't hippie love so they ran away I, mean, huh? <laughs> I was just saying Gina's pretty good at going off the off the fly on this sort of subject and it just took me a second to catch that go oh, you add up one two and three and I don't think this is going to be an issue for Gina to give an impromptu talk about this subject to high schoolers who've never heard anything like this in their life whatever they hear is going to be more than they've heard in the past. Mm. And whom she's worked with all her life. Right. Sure. Mm. Finish this thought. Mm. Since I will, since uh, uh, I will have to leave a lot of stuff out, I know I will leave a lot of stuff out. I know, since I know I will leave a lot of stuff out, Therefore, now use the word. Pertinent stuff, uh, important. Extemporaneous. Why is it she cannot be extemporaneous? Because I'll miss the major points. Because she knows she will leave out a lot the, of stuff. And major points. Right. Mm. Got it? What yeah. do you think of that reasoning? Yeah. But what keeps you from being spontaneous mm -hmm. or extemporaneous? That I will leave out major points and a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And therefore you can't trust yourself to be extemporaneous. No. Right? Hey kids, in case I forget anything important, here's the website to go check out, or here's the title of the book. You can get it yourself. It's all written down, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think of that statement? Mm. The reason I cannot be extemporaneous mm. is because I know I will leave a lot of good stuff out. It happens a lot. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I think it does. No, it doesn't. Okay. Why do you say no, it doesn't? Tell me, can you give me the last time you spoke extemporaneous? About five minutes ago. That is called extemporaneous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason you say that, that was extemporaneous and fits this description is because you left a lot of stuff out. Major points, yeah. yeah okay. Key points. By the way, uh, did you have those points in mind that you left out? 
No, I didn't have them in mind. I knew there was something specific about selfers, but I didn't remember them. Oh, how long have you had that question? Uh, well, this morning, but also in the past when I, um, when I've thought about the study, or maybe was going to use the study to reflect on for some reason, but I never checked, or I didn't check. By the way, are I you creating checked. the conditions, therefore, for leaving a lot of good stuff out? Yes. What do you think of that? Normal. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to make, make a judgment about it. What do you think of that? Well, I don't like it, but I find it normal. Even if I did do things with some kind of preparation and stuff, I still leave good things out. No. So even if you were to do the work, you're still plagued by this terrible condition that you know you will leave good stuff out. Mm-hmm. Right. By the way, uh, have you ever uh, prepared by uh, going back and taking a look at what this self-business is all about in that report? No. Oh. Are you creating the conditions, therefore, for your judgment? Yeah. Well, does that make it true or false? True. Makes it false. Would, would, well, it makes the judgment that I'm nervous because I wasn't prepared. You're not prepared because you believe that even if you were to, to go back and work, you would leave a lot of good stuff out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And therefore, do you have an example of being prepared? See, you have this idea that you need to be prepared. But how can you be prepared if you have this belief that even if you are going to be prepared, what you know will happen? I will leave a good, is that right? Some good points out. Yeah. Now, what do you think about the fact, therefore, that you're never prepared? Well. That you can't be prepared if you have this idea, agree? Because you know you're going to leave a lot of good stuff out. Well, it's not that I'm never prepared or I don't never prepare. It's just that's what happens when I sometimes am prepared or, and so. Is there ever a time when you are prepared and you can act extemporaneously? Yeah. I, I I have acted in that way, but I end up remembering, fig, learning that I missed the issue or I didn't get it correct, but I thought I had. So then, I get prepared based on what my understanding is. Then the answer to the question is? Well, under those conditions, yes. Then, therefore, you have never acted spontaneously prepared. I don't, I've never acted spontaneous. You mean I wasn't prepared? From what you just said, even when I have prepared, I still find I leave some stuff out, even when I act spontaneously. But you <clears throat> asked for an example of when I thought I was, and I would say, yeah, there were times where I thought I was, but, but discovered that there were some that I got the wrong question or got the wrong issue or something important I left out, but I thought I had been prepared. 
therefore it turns out that you were not prepared to Oh act. yeah, I would say. No. So it wait a minute. Hold on to that. Therefore, in terms of this statement, since I know I will leave good stuff out, what effect does that have on your preparation or your presentation? Well, knowing that, I'm, if it's important, I often try to get as all the, try my best to make sure that I've got all the points, knowing that I will do that. But when I do present it, it um, ends up <clears throat> that I left major, I, I discover afterwards that I left some points out. Yeah. Jay, um, do you find that the uh, things that you leave out tend to be the same things? I haven't looked at it that way, but, but probably. Minute, isn't that rather important? What is it about those things that you leave out? <clears throat> Uh, what did you do to you just a moment ago when I posed that point? The point being, is there something common among the things that you leave out? What did it do to you? Uh, caught me off guard, like I didn't do something. I didn't check to see what was common among those things that I left unresolved. Then that would mean you're leaving the mystery, is that right? But I have looked and seen that it's most often the ones that I, areas that I don't understand. Oh. What does that do to you, what you've been saying? Well, being caught off guard means that I don't understand something or that I'll be seen I don't understand something or that I will see that I don't understand something. The point, I think your answer was when I asked you, is it likely that there is something common among the things that you left out? You said yes, now that I think about it. Uh, those things are those that I don't understand. Right. Right, so you could identify, as it were, those things you don't understand. Right. Right? Right. Well, what would it be like to focus on those things that you don't understand? What would it be like? What would that do? What would that be like? Be good. Hmm? No, no, no. What would it be like having to face the things that you don't understand, that you know so long as you leave them not understood, that will allow you to continue this belief that you cannot be acting spontaneously because you know that the things that you're going to leave out are the things you don't understand. So long as you leave those things not understood, does that mean, therefore, that I cannot finish it? <clears throat> well, I can't act spontaneously. So long as I don't finish it. Well, but see, I think I do understand. It's only under those conditions that I discover. I mean, it's like it's not that I 
don't under or, or I'll go back and check or I'll even when I'm preparing I'll say okay you don't understand but you ask me what's it like to go back and check um, I find that it's if it's before I find it good I say oh, okay great I didn't get I didn't see that or I see something new about it If it's afterwards, then it's condemnation. Yeah, see, we're reflecting, and uh, it looks like, therefore, in your preparing for presentation or preparing to share something, uh, you believe you know that you're going to leave a lot of good things out and you find out that those things you left out you didn't understand but on reflection you're also saying on the other hand when I did study those things I thought I did understand right so or th yeah. yeah would you agree it looks like there are two different ideas of understanding yeah Right? Or that when I, yeah, or yeah. when I'm called upon to present it, it, something happens. I don't know. Say, so, what do you think of the fact that you may have two different ideas of understanding? Um... What do I think about it? Um, I don't think about it. I just so I'd be interested in knowing which one was the better, or to be able to do the better. I don't. I don't know. What do I think about it? Yeah. Okay. Let me go back then. You have this great statement. I know I'm going to leave a lot of good things out. Right. Uh, that's predictive, isn't it? I know I will leave a lot of good things out. Right. Yeah. Right, that's a charge against yourself, is it not? Mm-hmm. By the way, who at home charged you with that very line? Well, the first thought was my mother when she talks about when I'm trying to talk about something and she'll say that's not what happened. What do you do in such a case? <coughs> Argue. Or with my dad, similar thing. What way? That's not what was said in the paper scenes or newspapers or articles that I read. Well, they, they're both doing the same thing. Right. Right? Uh, by the way, in both of those cases, uh, ideally, what should oh. you have done? Um, brought in the data to show whether I was correct or not. Uh, why didn't you do it? Well, because there's a state of mind that you don't, you know that they don't know, so you don't want to go back and check and make sure and show them that they don't know. Uh, therefore, what are you doing? Saving at that moment? 
saving them saving them and in oh. the same time oh. saving myself because well I don't know if I'm saving myself because I don't check it all has to do with this one word that you used before prepare isn't it your father has right he's arguing with you and he's saying well I think I've read the article or I've read the paper, and I think I know what's there. So when he brings it up, I mention something and it contradicts what, or it may not be exactly the way he s hears it. So he'll complain, he'll say it's not there, or you don't know what you're talking about. But I have a memory that it's there, but I don't go and check or show him that he's inaccurate or even see whether in fact I'm inaccurate. That's right. right. So it becomes an argument. So it becomes an argument. Yeah. Rather than determine whether or not either of you is right or wrong. Right. Is that right? Right. But it's a, it's a, it's a good condition for an argument. Right. I don't know why it's coming up now because I, I'm just puzzled. I mean, like this is something I've seen many times, so that I try my best to make sure it doesn't happen. You know, I look and see. Okay, did I understand that or not? Did I not understand it? So I, I, I recognize it's that state that comes up that I can overlook something or just put it aside, or not listen to it, actually. Yeah, what is that, not listen to it? Well, not listening to myself, um, knowing which, what I should be doing. Yeah, but... Looks like the That's goal. interesting. That's a lot of the distractions, that well, especially on certain things. We'll put, put that together. Go ahead. Well, that fits in terms of that if I don't, that I don't listen, or l like you should do this, or it doesn't matter what it, it. It's like this is what you think is best, and I don't listen to that. I go and do something else. Then it turns out to be not good an argument an argument or distraction or yeah. turmoil yeah yeah so um, as you reflect on this in the way it's functioning in the house uh, what's the goal of these discussions oh with dad and mom arguments I guess or just that's right then neither of you are interested in establishing what's there. No. But it opens up an argument. Well, yeah, I know there's a moment where if I were to think about going and getting it to make sure, I don't, because... Because? Well, make them look bad, because I'm almost sure that what I had to say was there. But it would also open up maybe the fact that I could have seen something more about what I was doing. Yeah. Oh, it, it <laughs> yes, it may make them look bad if you were to do it. And you would also, might even in fact, get uh, an additional insight into the material. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But that would put you in a position, therefore, of knowing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. And I'm open to that, but I'm not open to what would follow if I found that they were, in, they were wrong, or that I would show them that they're, they're make wrong. Them, that would make them look bad. Yeah. And you can't do that. Why not? 
what would follow. I don't know. That's interesting, isn't it? So therefore, not preparing saves you from calling them out, and it also keeps you from gaining further insights into the subject you have an interest in. Yeah, that's true. Right? Uh, that means learning is not possible. Nope. Only a, right, only at a certain level. Yeah. But to go deeper, Nope. Yeah. Oh. Don't know about that. What? I said that would be uh, difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would it be difficult, by the way? It's rather simple. Well, it's not that I'm not, I haven't achieved certain things. It's just going, pushing it to a different level. Would be difficult. What Would kind be of diff difficult. What kind of difficult? I don't know. Well, I guess it would be like the lady last week who was in the, my dream, which would be she would present a good position, very clear, straightforward. But what? And um, there were people that disagreed with her, but she was able to hold her point and um, I don't see that's where I am. And I don't see? I don't see, I don't know what it is. I don't see I don't know. I just, I'm not that woman. Yeah, because you have because of the problem in preparing. I don't know. Well, in the way we're reasoning about the what follows when you try to prepare, then you'll have to deal with these things, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. Say, if you had your mother and father here, what would you tell them about this? Uh, uh, your father just said, you know your problem? You leave a lot of good stuff out. You don't know how to read. Go ahead. I would say, yeah, you're right. Knowing that, let's go find out what it does say. Hmm. What would that do to him? Uh, I don't need to do that. I already know what it says. Then you can't do it. He won't do it. Because you know what he will say. And that's when you start think, seeing that um, he will, he's not feeling good about what happened. He'll feel bad. Yep. And your job is to make sure he doesn't feel bad. Right. Well, that's, that's your job. You're allowed, right? That's your job. What's your job again? Uh, make sure people feel okay. And therefore, when there's yeah. a disagreement, what must your role be? Just get into arguments. Yeah. And they blow over and you go back to normal life. Yeah. That perpetuates their normal life. Yeah. And good heavens, if you were to do this other thing, that would challenge their whole way of life. Uh, they wouldn't like it. But your job is to finish it. To keep everything 
what? Normal, according to their their idea of normal. Okay. Would you agree, it would be nice to know the origin of how you got that post? Like that's your job in the family, to keep things normal, but to allow the arguments to go on, and that's normal. It's a normal way of being for them. That's what they like. Everyone in the family likes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the fact that you got that job? I got it. Many others have it. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. all have it. Who gave it to you? My mother, my dad, I don't know. Uh, can, you, can you give me a point where your mother gave you that job? Or insisted you play it out? Um, I don't know. A particular scene? Well, <clears throat> can you recall an event where your mother specifically told you to do something to make your father feel good? Uh, sure. Uh, math scenes. Math. Go ask your dad to help you with math. Oh. And that's what I did. Uh, knowing that he knew math or didn't know math? Knowing it wasn't going to be a helpful scene at all. Well, then what is she, she knows that. Yeah, and she was there watching. So she's seeing someone finish it. Frustrated, not uh, getting what I want to be. And she knows that... He's frustrated. That he doesn't know what he's trying to do with you, which is to teach you something he doesn't know. Right, and he doesn't prepare himself because he knows that each week I'll probably come and ask him. So he doesn't help himself either. Oh, well, that he's already in the game, isn't he? Yep. Not to prepare. Yep. Yeah, it's a common. Yeah, this was when he was teaching you calculus? <laughs> no. What? Uh, grade school math. Yeah, yeah, it's very and difficult. And he would have to do a lot of Seventh grade math, algebra. To, yeah, it's not like calculus, which everybody knows without working. No? Arithmetic's not, everybody should know that. You can't write your calculator without it. What Algebra. Do you, what do you make of this? That you're being assigned a job? Finish it. That is? Well, that I imitate my dad. Right. The whole thing is imitation, isn't it? Yeah. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Or imitate my mother, whichever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that what the dream is telling you? Yeah, it looks like it. So ideally, what should you have told your mother when she told you to go do something which you knew to be finished? Um, well, sure I'd ask Dad for help, but he hasn't helped me so far, and it's only frustrating me and him. Uh, why don't you go and ask him and um, <laughs> she won't do it because <laughs> he'll be upset too. So. Oh, hey, by the way, is your mother one of those ignorant broads who doesn't know arithmetic? Oh, she knows. Well, how do you know she knows? Oh, well, because she was an accountant for Oh, while. oh, so keep oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. She knows. Well, then, uh, what are you going to tell her? Why don't you help me? Oh, 
<laughs> no, go ask your dad. Uh, no, what are you going to tell her? Um, no, she wasn't an accountant. She was a bookkeeper, but she knew math. Uh, What, what am I going to tell her? What would you call she's doing with you? Well, have you... What? Well, the Friday, the, the evening classes were always, I'm not prepared. She makes sure I'm not prepared because she doesn't provide the environment or conditions so that I can be prepared. So it forces me then to go and ask my dad, who doesn't prepare himself. She doesn't offer any help herself. Nobody really gets involved in helping and preparing or finding out what's, <coughs> what needs to be done so that I can do it well. Well then, are they keeping you from excellence? <laughs> Keeping me from excellence? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think of that? It's interesting. You asked for an example. I, there was one time in eighth grade where I, I like I did master the, uh, I remember algebra, and I was the second in the class in terms of being able to do certain, be able to do the work. And uh, there was one girl who was really was better than me, and I remember that what she was good at was word problems. And that's what made her better. Other than that, she couldn't beat me with the with the any of the any any what is the factoring or the polynomials. But you, but you or never any of that. asked her how to do it. Never learned how to do it. Yeah. So it kept me out of math. Out of math. That keeps you out of excellence. Yep. So, uh, I gave up. No, no, you didn't give up. What do you mean I didn't give up? I gave up. I didn't continue. Well, in one way you did, in another way you didn't. I mean, you then joined the family. Oh, I joined the family, right. <laughs> Time to get out? Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what does the guest do to that statement? Um, I'm just puzzled why it's coming up now. But it's not something. Dream there too, Pierre. I said, I guess I could. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what happened on Friday? That's our amenities. I don't know. Uh, I said I was prepared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it goes to Friday or Friday morning or something. Let's see what happened. Oh, right. Um, well, we had a. I thought we. I, I went went to Parmenides class, and I thought we were supposed to give all the statements regarding self but discovered that it was really what are the 14 categories or conclusions 
I didn't remember that was the assignment. I thought we were supposed to look at all the references to self in the first hypothesis. So I pulled all those out and I was looking at them just to see whether I whether there was something about what it was that they what was it that could be said to be common among all those statements. So, uh, did Barbara send a message around to all the members about meeting on that Friday? I'm sure she did. Well, I, did you read it? Um, I read that it was at my house, no. no. Oh, she had another line on the bottom. No, I didn't remember. No, oh. I didn't read it. What did it say? To collect the conclusions from each of the arguments. Oh, I didn't see that. Right. I, in fact, I didn't even open it. I just, uh, because I, I thought that's what was said. So oh. at the last meeting was... Oh collect all the statements about yeah, the self. Yeah. But the point is, uh, you worked on that assumption without checking whether or not that was correct or not. Um, yeah, I assumed that she was just repeating what I already knew. I didn't even check the email. Yeah, okay. I just, I, it said Regina's house and that was all I saw. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting? Well, yeah, I didn't. I Why didn't. this is coming up? And you had questions at the end, too, if I remember. Go ahead. Uh, well, we can listen to the tape. Now, I need to go back and look at it, too, but I can't remember exactly. But you had what appeared to me to be a lot of questions at the end. What was it about? Um, Division, definition. Well, that was because it was introduced, and I didn't, I didn't understand that. I mean, it was introduced in the meeting, like this would be a definition or this would be a division. And I asked, okay, well, then what would, I mean, okay, how do you know it's a division? And it was said that Proclus doesn't, isn't clear about those particular elements. But that's interesting because I've read that, those sections. And I didn't find them that clear, but I didn't really break it down for myself. But when it was brought up, I was trying to find out. So. So there are situations where you can read something. You can even go back to, to some text. And even then it's not clear. Or I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't make it clear or I don't make it conclude that it's not clear. And therefore, how do I best understand it? I'm just curious for myself, uh, what would have happened in your family if you and your father, or mother for that matter, had gone back, if you, on a rare occasion you had been able to take him back to a text? So never how, happened. How did it go? I, right, yeah. it never happened in the family, but... That I wear, I'm a, I have a memory of, no. Okay, but I'm just saying, if, uh, just, just um, hypothetically, if you got him to do it once, and you went back to that text, and you both looked at it, and it turns out the text itself had problems. What might your father have said at that point? I don't know if that goes anywhere, but I'm just kind of curious. Because this seems like it's a different situation. Here you've gone back to the text, and it doesn't have a clear answer. What would have, what's, what's the, well, I'll shut up. He he would he wouldn't talk about it. He would just say no. I, I, Impossible. Yeah. 
or he'd make sure that I didn't, you know, I wasn't seeing what was there. Or he'd throw up his hands and say, eh, it was a waste of time. Something, it, was, it would be something that he would make himself in a position, put himself in a pa position of knowing of what was the best. So he would make a conclusion about it and weigh it off. Something. Even though you saw that the text itself was not good. If I came to that, well, <laughs> it's rare I'd come to that conclusion. If I did, <laughs> I wouldn't conclude because the, the, that would mean that the text itself is unclear and therefore I would be putting myself in, in a position like my dad where we, he, if he's unclear, I couldn't say that. So I can't say this book is unclear. Thank you. It maintains the ambiguity, right? Yes. Keep the ambiguity. That's the key. Yeah. Keep the ambiguity. It maintains the ambiguity. Mm. Then there's everything normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And working and it takes a lot of effort to a lots of effort for me to <coughs> which is part of the dream, which is a lot of effort to find the boards, find the, pro you know, it was all very complicated. The room was a mess, and not a mess, but not set up so that you could demonstrate to the students what you wanted to show them. The, they had blackboards everywhere, but nothing was actually on the walls. They were yeah. against the you, walls. You tolerated it. Yeah, I did. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Then I thought of flip charts, and so I just gave up the challenge and said, okay, I'll just do it without any demonstration. But you left the classroom with the proper material for another class. Well, I was trying to, trying to work on the kids, trying to get things orderly, but... Um, it was a compl it was all um, the boards weren't right the f there wasn't anything there that would have the 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 room itself was not um conducive or wasn't set up you didn't have a big blackboard it was like um it, it was complicating it complicating any work. I don't know, maybe that's why the teacher left. <laughs> that's why the teacher... Teacher left. I mean, it was complicating any work. It wasn't focused. It wasn't, there wasn't any one point in the room where the students could so focus. What would you have had to have done to maximize your chances? I guess the best thing would have been to get all the, get the students to take all the blackboards that were in the room against the walls and just, they weren't up on the walls, but just get rid of all the stuff that was the... For you to have done that, what role would you be playing? Um, I don't know. I'd be doing something different for myself. I would be coming out and and taking more control and yeah. in a in a pause. Yeah. In, in, well, actually, it would be um, it would be um, showing how important uh, the work that I w wanted to present was. Oh. It would add a tremendous yeah. amount to yeah. the students, and it would probably wake them up. But you know, yeah. the the right. the ones that didn't want to may have been more interested. Yeah. 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 So it would have been the present. That it would. Have so the the willingness to stay sabotage. in that circumstance. I sabotage all the sabotage good stuff. Sabotage your own efforts. 
and sabotage every, especially yeah. the good thing. Right. I mean, this was important. This was a good. What I was doing was important, and even the lady thought so. Yeah. But I was sabotaging myself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Gary, when you ask, I bring my father question. in. When you ask, uh, like, where do you, where does a person feel a certain pain, or where does that go in the body? What are you trying to get at? Like, you're trying to release, identify the physical pain. Yeah, I didn't do that. Not not with her, but just yeah. with other people. Uh, what are you looking for when you ask that question? If the person is reliving the experience in the moment, mm -hmm. whatever they are describing physically will be a key to their own past since that state of mind will be present in the earliest scenes that indicated the teaching of that very lesson. Mm -hmm. It links it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm because that feeling state actually runs through their whole life under similar circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, thank and you. Thank you, and, thank and you it's guys. interesting too that I can't say even this, dis this discussion is important. It's like I have to mask it, or, or what do I call it? Um, Sabotage. No, um, put a pillow over it. <laughs> Sabotage. Sabotage. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. I was walking into the house. Maybe today or tomorrow.